Before we really get into today's video, I just wanna thank all of you because we just hit 20,000 subscribers. That is absolutely insane. I feel this overwhelming like pressure now to make videos, which I kinda of just have to put out of my brain now because there is so many of you. And I really just started this channel for fun. It was mostly to make videos that I was interested in, things that I wanted to be doing on the side. The thing about YouTube is that you are the client. So I feel like I'm the client here. But now that there's 20,000 of you, I feel like you guys are the client and like I'm having to make videos for you guys. So I'm just trying to like, reset my mind here and like not deal with this like ginormous amount of people that are now seeing videos every time I post something and really stick to like the beginning where I was just making stuff that I thought was funny or that I thought was cool and interesting. And so I'll try to keep that like grassroots feeling of this channel, but obviously like look at this A-roll now, like I'm spending so much time trying to set this stuff up and figuring out that I know in my own head that I need to like chill, just chill a little bit with the video, at least the video production quality at least, like I just, for me, it's about what I'm about to say, what I'm about to talk about, what is interesting, and not so much putting this huge gloss in this coat of paint. Long story short, thank you. 20,000 subscribers is massive, and I'm so humbled and appreciative of every single one of you guys. I think I just spit there. That's how excited I am, I'm spitting. But really, even more so to say thank you, I have so much gear. Like, the one thing that happens is when you have a YouTube channel and you start to grow, is companies just send you a lot of stuff. And a lot of people are like, oh, that's so cool, I'm gonna get free gear and I can just play with things. Yeah, it's cool at the start, but then it starts to become a huge pile. I don't know if you can see, like, this over here is just a pile of gear uh, that I need to review and get through. But it kind of works out because I wanna give some of this stuff away to you guys. I've got a huge video planned with Rode microphones where I'm gonna do a deep dive into podcasting. I've done a few videos on podcasting already, but I think this will be like my masterclass in podcasting. And so to do that, Rode sent me a whole bunch of stuff. Rode Podcaster, Procaster microphones, microphone arms, all this crazy stuff. And I really wanna give some of that stuff back to you guys. I've also reached out to Musicbed. Actually, they reached out to me uh, and they also wanna give some stuff away. So if you are interested in a giveaway for me to say thank you to all of you that have now joined the channel, if you've been here from the start or if you've just joined, doesn't matter, hit me up on Twitter. That's my Twitter account. We do a lot of crazy stuff over there too. But that will be the place where we'll be talking about that giveaway and I'll have all the details of how we're gonna do that. Now, another big milestone for the channel was that I actually just got my first camera to review uh, that's ever happened on the channel. I've never been given a camera to review. And of all the companies to do it, it was Fuji. Fuji, I love you guys. So Fuji Canada gave me a Fuji X-T4 for about a month. With the Fuji X-T4, I think it's a little bit of an interesting camera. And what I wanna do in this video today is talk about my thoughts using the Fuji X-T4 for an entire month, but I don't want it to be this in-depth review. I think there's enough great reviews out there for the X-T4. You can check out Gerald Undunn's, you can check out Atola Visuals, um, you can check out a bunch of people that have done great reviews on the X-T4 already. For me, I just kinda wanna come from the perspective of someone who's already a Fuji X-T3 user, who's somebody who's already a lover of Fuji cameras, and what I thought of basically replacing my X-T3 with an X-T4 for an entire month. Now for this video to make more sense, this is how I think of the X-T4. The X-T4 is basically a video-centric version of the Fuji X-T3. And the Fuji X-T3 is a more photo-centric version of the X-T4. So I want you to think of them as almost the exact same camera. They have the same processor, they have the same sensor, but it's a lot of just different bells and whistles. And to further explain that theory, I'm gonna break down all the new features on the X-T4 real quick that I think are important to realize when you're shopping for this camera or any camera in general, really. And the first one here is the flippy screen. Your first instinct when it comes to a flippy screen is probably gonna be, yeah, of course I want a flippy screen. Flippy screen is so much better than anything else. And I agree if it's primarily for video, but when it comes to photos, I think I actually prefer the tilting screen on the X-T3. As you can see, this one just sort of tilts up, but it doesn't go side to side, it just tilts up. So when I'm shooting photos, I think this is wonderful because I can just kind of hold it from the hip and just look down at the screen and I'm good. And truthfully, even for video, I haven't actually hated this. It, sometimes it is nice to have that side screen there so you can kind of have it as a point of contact for holding it. But overall, I don't think the flippy screen in the world of Fuji is that big of a deal. Of course, when it comes to vlogging, that is a huge deal breaker for a lot of people. You really wanna be able to see yourself. Like even right now, I'm shooting the Pocket 4K and I have to set up a monitor on top just so I can see what I'm doing. If I was using the X-T4, I could just flip that side flippy out and I'm good to go. Another thing to consider is if you have an X-T3, if you wanna pick up an X-T3, they do make these little cheap mirror things like, like, like 10 bucks or something. And so you can still see yourself because you'll get the reflection of what's happening in the screen through the mirror. And so truthfully, as cool as a flippy screen is, and I think it's great if you're primarily a video shooter, I don't think it's a huge upgrade over the X-T3. And I think it'll actually bother some people. If you are a street shooter or you're primarily using these cameras for photos, I think a tilt up screen is actually better than a flip out screen. I'm probably gonna piss off a lot of people there who are just like flippy screen is the future, it's the way to be. Sure, I'm just saying I don't think it's the end of the world if it has a flippy screen or it doesn't have a flippy screen. 
Positive is if you're a video shooter, flippy screen is great. Now the next big thing that Fuji brought to the X-T4 that the X-T3 does not have is internal image body stabilization or IBIS for short, not to be confused with IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome, something you should always take care of. I personally suffer from IBS. I just take massive dumps, but don't get those confused. There's IBIS and there's IBS. We're talking about IBIS. We're not gonna talk about IBS. Maybe we'll save that for another video. But internal image body stabilization is basically the sensor inside the camera is moving outside of what the camera is actually doing. So you can kind of float around and that sensor in there is floating inside. Basically what happens when you're shooting is if you move and you go a little bit too fast, you will see the sensor try to catch up to your movements. It's trying to anticipate what you're gonna do. And if you kind of move where it doesn't think it's gonna go or if you move too fast, it basically hits the wall of the sensor wall. So there's like an edge around the sensor. If it goes to the edge there, it's gonna reset itself and it feels like the whole image just gets a little bit jerky. Truthfully, it can ruin shots. And to the point where I'm not entirely sure if I would use it on pro work. Way back in the day, if you remember when the X-T4 first came out, my buddy Lee Zavitz got a copy from Fuji and I went around the city and I shot a whole low light B-roll thing with it. And that had IBIS on the entire time. A lot of people have commented on that video being like, oh, it looks a little jerky, it looks a little bit warpy. That was using an OIS lens. I was using the kit 18 to 55 along with the IBIS within the camera. Everything was set to default factory settings. Again, that was a pre-production model. And now that I've had a production Fuji X-T4, I really don't see much of a difference. This is technically something they could fix with a firmware update, but again, don't hang your hat on something you're not entirely sure will get fixed. If IBIS is super important to you for video, I do not think the X-T4 is the best option out right now, but in the world of Super 35 and larger sensors than Micro Four Thirds, it is definitely passable. It is enough to kill micro jitters if you're not really moving around too much. So if you're just shooting some product B-roll, even stuff for weddings and whatnot, if you're just sitting there and you're relatively steady, I think it's fine. If you want something that's like a gimbal, this is not the camera for you. Still look at stuff like the Panasonic GH5 because you can basically run with that thing and it is rock steady. One of the biggest upgrades I think Fuji has made on the video side of with their cameras, and this is the first time we're seeing it on the X-T4, is video-centric controls. My biggest gripe with the X-T3 and as much as I love these top dials so you can control your shutter speed and your ISO and everything, I think they're fantastic for on the photography side because you can just quickly shoot, set what you need to set and you're not really dialing into menus. The problem is when you switch from photo to video on this, it copied all of those photo settings over to the video. So if you're someone who cares about your shutter speed and cares about where your ISO set and all that kind of stuff for video, if you're shooting photos, a lot of times that stuff does not match. So if you're running gunning and you're doing a hybrid shoot where you gotta get stills and you gotta get video, the X-T3 was just a nightmare for trying to figure that out. The X-T4 has video centric control. So when you shoot that camera into video mode, those settings are all digital. It's completely separate from whatever's happening on those top dials. This is a huge, huge advancement on the video side. And I'm really glad Fuji listened to people because I'm sure I was not the only one complaining about the fact that when I switched from photos to videos, all those settings we had copied over, it was driving me nuts to the point where I barely ever used the X-T3 for video because of that. If we consider the Fuji X-T4 as the better video camera than the X-T3, there's really not much more that's brought to it than the X-T3 in terms of bit rates or anything like that. So they still both shoot 4K. You can shoot 24, you can shoot 30. They do have a 30 minute record limit, which for a lot of people I know is a deal breaker. It's kind of a pain when you gotta keep resetting that camera every 30 minutes. I'm not sure why Fuji is still doing that. I don't think it's heat related. And I know that that European tax thing or whatever, where they had to be classified as video cameras, isn't really a thing anymore. Basically it used to be that if it was over 30 minutes, it was a camera, a video camera. I don't know the logistics of it, but basically that's gone. So why they're still putting 30 minute limits in there is beyond me. But other than that, they are very, very capable cameras. They have a log mode, which is called F-Log. You also get all the film simulations that you'd want from the photo size. So if you wanna shoot in Eterna, if you wanna shoot in classic Chrome, you can shoot all of that in camera, which is really, really cool for people that don't wanna do a whole lot of color grading, but F-Log is fantastic. And something they also brought to the X-T4 is F-Log View Assist. The thing is, if you shot in log on the X-T3, you're always looking at a flat image and that flat image is incredibly boring to look at and not to mention it's hard sometimes to set your exposure and even set focus and whatever. And so F-Log View Assist now allows you to see basically a Rec. 709 or a Turna essentially look on the actual camera so you know exactly uh, what you're shooting and how it's gonna look when you get into post. You can also do some nice high frame rates on the X-T4. It can go up to 240 FPS in HD. I don't shoot a lot of high frame rate. For me, the maximum frame rate that I'm cool with is 60 FPS and it's nice that all these Fujis, the Fuji X-T3 and the X-T4 will do 4K 60, which is fine. Something I know a lot of you are interested in with these cameras now and basically every camera that's come out in the last like few years, especially since YouTube has taken off is autofocus. Autofocus on Fuji cameras, I think gets a bad rap. The X-T3 
clarity for me has always been great for autofocus, especially with the 18 to 55 kit lens. The thing with Fuji and autofocus that you need to realize is they're only as good as the lens you put on that camera. When I try to use my 35 millimeter F2 prime for my Fuji, that thing hunts like absolutely crazy. If I use the 18 to 55 kit lens, it is wonderful. Fuji gave me the 16 to 55 F2.8, which is a fantastic lens. The thing with it though, is I actually thought that it didn't focus as well as the 18 to 55. I don't really have some good examples of that. It was just, you have to like take my word for this. But as I was shooting with it, there was just something about it that didn't seem as precise as when I used the 18 to 55. And when you consider the 18 to 55 is only like 400 bucks, whereas the 16 to 55 is pushing almost a grand, it's kind of a hard sell for me. As we start to wrap this video up, I just wanna to touch on photography as well with the X-T4 because I did replace the X-T3 for the entire month and I had a huge client shoot where I had to shoot three menus, full menus for basically Uber Eats. So I had to shoot like all this kind of studio stuff with the client's office where I had to shoot all like, we're talking like 20, 30 plus menu items of food uh, over the course of a few weeks. Some things I really realized is that I do love that fixed aperture on the F2.8 with the 1655 for photos. Another thing is that Fuji gave me the battery grip. And so I was shooting all day, we're talking like from like 10 a.m. to like 4 p.m. nonstop, just basically bursting basically that entire time with the three batteries in that grip and it was wonderful. And not not only that, it just made the camera feel a lot beefier and better. It was the ergonomics changed entirely for me. The thing with Fuji and even with the X-T3 and the X-T4 is it's a relatively shallow grip. And when you have that battery grip on that camera, it basically gives you much more to hang on to. And of course you can rotate it for portrait shots and you still get controls with the shutter. I was never a huge fan of battery grips before I used that battery grip. I think it's wonderful so much so that I'm probably gonna grab the battery grip for my X-T3 because it just totally transforms the camera for me on the photo side of things. I just wanna show you some photos that I took with the X-T4. This is all shot in Provia, which is the standard color profile that Fuji offers. Of course, Fuji has a whole bunch of film simulations that you can choose from. For me, when I'm doing client work, I think Provia is great. These are JPEGs. I haven't done anything to these. This is straight out of camera. Fuji X-T4 with the 16 to 55 lens. I had basically the same light that I have set up right now to shoot myself just kind of off to the side. You can see here in this behind the scenes photo, but here's just a few of those photos that you can check out. I will leave the raw files if you want in the description of the video. If you want to play with them, you want to edit them, see how they work, see how they fly. That's totally up to you. But here's some photos that I shot with the Fuji X-T4. Okay, if you skip to this point, it's time to show you some footage. If not, welcome to this part of the video. We're gonna show you some footage that I shot on the X-T4. My buddy has a boat, went up onto Georgian Bay, which is about an hour north of the city of Toronto. But this is just a quick reel of B-roll that I shot on the X-T4. I hope you enjoy it. And then we'll wrap up the video right after this. It's a capable camera, and I think a lot of cameras now are super capable, and I know this isn't probably making it much easier for you to decide which camera you want, but again, look at these cameras as one camera. The X-T3 is the photo side, the X-T4 is the more video side. If you want a more hybrid, if you want the kind of best of both worlds, perhaps you can make an argument that the X-T4 is better. For me, I don't think it's worth the upgrade price, and I'm more interested to see what happens with like an X-T5, because I think that might be more of a drastic jump, and in terms of maybe even a new sensor, or a new processor at least, but for me right now, the X-T3 is perfect perfect for my needs, but if you're on the market for a brand new camera, and especially if you're looking for Super 35, X-T4 is premium, fantastic camera, and if you want something a little bit cheaper that is still super capable, you can grab an X-T3 used, and a lot of them are even body only going down to around a thousand bucks now, which is a whole lot of camera for only a thousand dollars. Right before I gave this camera back, I went on Twitter to tell people that I was giving the camera back, and I said, if anybody has any questions before I make this video, let me know. So I'm just gonna end this video with a quick Q&A about the X-T4, and hopefully I'll be able to answer your questions. If you have more questions, of course, leave them in 
in the comments. I will be there to answer them, but let's dive into a quick Q&A. All right, first question is from my buddy John who says, will it blend? Fuji, if you wanna send me a camera again, I am more than happy to try that out for you, John. I will have the Vitamix going at full blast and we'll see if the X-T4 can in fact blend. Diogo says, how does it match against the X-T3? Overall, is there something that make you wanna dump your X-T3? I think I answered that in this video. For me, the X-T3 is perfect, but if you're on the market for something new and you want something that's perhaps a little bit more future-proof, the X-T4 is fantastic. Kids are saying, how does it compare to other cameras that are great hybrids like a7 III? For me, I'm not big on full frame. I think Super 35 is like this perfect medium between like micro four thirds and a full frame camera. So you're getting a lot of the benefits a full frame or a bigger sensor, but a lot of the benefits of a smaller one, which is smaller lenses, a smaller form factor. Of course, moving forward, we're seeing like the S5 and even that new Sony A7C. A lot of these cameras are getting smaller and smaller. So that gap between size and functionality is closing. But as an overall photo video hybrid, I definitely think the uh, Fuji is way better than Sony, uh, especially when it comes to colors and the film simulations and the JPEGs that can come out of a Fuji compared to a Sony, it's night and day. The benefits of full frame do not outweigh the benefits of what Fuji is doing with photo processing and their color on the Super 35 side. Tom Bradley says, always been curious to try the 16 to 55 to compare it with my 18 to 55. I just never thought it was worth it for the money. My 18 to 55 has always been my go-to for video. I agree. I think the 1855 is a perfect video lens. I would not switch it. I would not switch the 1655, but if I was doing more photos specifically, and that's actually kind of why I'm considering picking up that 1655 is as a photo lens, it is way better than the 18 to 55. So if you're more on the photo side, grab the 1655. But truthfully, I just hope they make a Mark II of these where like the 16 to 55 has the OIS and the autofocus of the 18 to 55. That would be great. That would be a perfect lens and it might be the only lens you probably need. Fox Tech says, be interesting to hear your opinions on the best Fujifilm color profiles in video and photos and why you think so, especially for those who don't color grade. I kind of mentioned this in the video already, but Provia is my favorite standard profile. I think it's fantastic. There's not really much you need to do to it in post. If you want a little bit more cinematic flat look, Eterna is absolutely great. But if you want to get fun and have experiments, shoot an F-log and just play with that in post. I will have a video coming out very soon that dives into color. Uh, Data Color, who make the Spider X, which is how you can calibrate your monitor, have sent me one. And so I'm going to do a dive into how I calibrated my monitors for color and my process for color grading videos. And I think we'll have a better conversation about film simulations and all that kind of stuff because I actually edit all my videos, or sorry, I color grade all my videos using film simulations anyways. Um, I'm not someone who just plays with dials. I try to go for a film stock. And so that will be a better video and I'll dive into that question a little bit more for you. I hope I answered your question. And if I didn't, leave a comment. We'll have a conversation about the X-T4. Like I said, overall, it's a great camera. For me, I'm probably gonna keep hanging on to my X-T3, but thank you again to Fuji Canada for sending me the X-T4. And if you're on the market for a new Super 35 camera, how can you go wrong? I mean, how can you go wrong with any cameras right now? That's the one thing we didn't even talk about. The elephant in the room right now is, aside from me, <laughs> is that all cameras are great. All cameras are great now. You can't really buy a bad camera. It's all about shooting experience. Pick the camera that you like in your hands and it feels good. That's the camera for you. That's the perfect camera for you. Perhaps that one is the X-T4, perhaps it isn't. But if you have questions about the X-T4, let me know in the comments. And again, thank you to 20,000 subscribers. That's fantastic. Be on the lookout for details on the giveaway on my Twitter. But otherwise, I'm Patrick Tomasso and you will see me Next time I feel like making a video. Cheers. I haven't done one of these little behind the scenes for a while, but this is the first time I've really used the Pocket 4K for a roll. And so you can see here, I'm just facing out to the window. I've got a big light over here uh, where I was sitting. I also just took one of these like cheap uh, Amazon mic arms and I have it lashed onto the camera cage and I'm going over here so I can have the D4 D4, the D3 Pro while I'm sitting, so I have audio. And then this is my backdrop, which is just my desk. And it's kind of working out pretty well. I put a monitor on top here and everything is going off this V-mount battery. Uh, so I don't have to worry about power. This basically this thing will go for like three hours straight. And because it goes right into the SSD, I can just plug the SSD into my computer after, start editing, and we're good to go. It's a little bit bigger of a setup than I'm kind of used to, but it didn't take too long to set up. And now that I've done it once, it should be easy to replicate anytime I want to make a video. So I just want to give you a breakdown of this the new A-roll setup, behind the scenes. Cheers.